In a world where so many are sorrowful, God lights a candle of joy in our hearts. We wait together for a saviour, who will be Emmanuel, Christ the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. The roots of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nations. The Gentiles will hope in him. Good morning and welcome to our worship once more, which is on the fourth Sunday in Advent. We are almost there. We are almost at the end of our Advent journey, almost at the completion of our preparations to celebrate the coming of Christ among us and being ready for his return. If you've been following the series that we've been talking about in recent weeks. Friends, I might just encourage you to remember our worships uh, in the coming week itself. It would be fantastic, wouldn't it, uh, to actually arrive on Christmas Day and remember to worship Christ and make him our priority for that day and indeed for the season that unfolds afterwards itself. So friends, take a look at where the worship is around the circuit and indeed there will be online worship for Christmas Day and for the Sunday afterwards. And then, of course, we will start the new year with a shared covenant service. Friends, so I hope that you'll be able to join us for those uh, acts of worship too. Let's pray together, shall we? Almighty God, you are greater than our minds can fathom, higher than our highest thoughts, sovereign over all worthy of our praise and honour. Forgive us that we sometimes lose our sense of awe and wonder even in your presence, that we become oblivious to your greatness and forgetful of your goodness. So speak to us once more as you spoke to Mary and help us to catch a new sense of who you are of all that you've done and all that you will yet do in our lives. Help us to magnify your name, sing your praises and tell of your greatness all through Christ, who is our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, let's share in the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So friends, take off your shoes and tiptoe in silence. For a miracle awaits. Get ready. Watch closely. Hold your breath. For wonder arrives. There's a story about a man who goes on a quiz show and he goes through all the rounds and he beats all the other contestants and he gets through to the final question. And the quiz master says for a million pounds, can you name all of Santa's reindeer? And the clock starts ticking and the man starts thinking, no, 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 no. And eventually he says, yes, I can. And the quiz master says, so, okay, for a million pounds, can you name all of Santa's reindeer. And it says, yes, 
Rudolph and Olive. And the quiz master says, is that your final answer? And the man says, yes, it's my final answer. Rudolph and Olive. And of course, he loses the money. He gives the wrong answer and he goes away disappointed and empty handed. But before he goes, the quiz man comes back and says, just explain to me why you gave that answer, how you got that answer. And I says, well, it's in the song, isn't it? He says, Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose. Ah, da, 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 da. You would even say it glows. Olive the other reindeer. And it suddenly occurred to me, maybe he hadn't heard it quite as much as he thought he had. Friends, I want to tell you that perhaps this is your chance. You might think you've heard the Christmas story, but listen to it once more and open your ears to hear it in all its truth and all its wonder. The birth of Jesus is announced. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to a town in Galilee named Nazareth. He had a message for a girl promised in marriage to a man named Joseph, who was a descendant of King David. The girl's name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Peace be with you. The Lord is with you and has greatly blessed you. Mary was deeply troubled by the angel's message, and she wondered what his words meant. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. God has been gracious to you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will make him a king, as his ancestor David was, and he will be the king of the descendants of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary said to the angel, I am a virgin. How then can this be? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come to you, and God's power will rest upon you. For this reason, the Holy Child will be called the Son of God. Remember your relative Elizabeth? It is said that she cannot have children, but she is herself, but she herself is now six months pregnant, even though she is very old. For there is nothing that God cannot do. I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it happen to me as you have said, and the angel left her. Thanks be to God. The wonderful thing about Mary is that she had enough faith to say yes to being part of God's greatest adventure. An adventure that over time would see her faith exceed every challenge she would encounter and bring about the saviour of the world. And I wonder, when God asks us, can we say the same of ourselves as we near the end of Advent once more? Do we have enough faith to say yes to God's greatest adventure for us, that we too might see our faith grow and exceed the challenges we come to face? Now I know that not everyone has grown up with Star Wars and Star Trek and Avengers Assemble like I have, but I reckon many of you will have grown up with equally fantastic adventures, such as H.G. Wells and his Time Machine, or the Famous Five, or the Lord of the Rings, to name a few. And I wonder as you look around you, how many Peter Pans or D'Artagnans or Mary Poppins there are? Who hasn't dreamt of being Luke Skywalker or Princess Leia, Wonder Woman or Batman or Superman or any other? The wonderful thing is that our imaginations allow us to take on a character that is already formed. We don't have to wait, we don't have to wonder, and we don't even have to do any of the hard work. We can pretend to be them on their adventure. And then we start to place them 
at the heart of our own adventures too. But I wonder, if you were putting together the world's greatest team of superheroes, who would be on your team? <laughs> would you even make it into the team? And would it include this uneducated teenager from the Middle East and middle of nowhere, a complete unknown, nobody? Because the interesting thing about the Holy Spirit is that he doesn't always choose people who are experts in the field. He often chooses people and wants people who show the potential to follow God wherever God leads them. So when Gabriel appears to Mary, he comes to invite her to take part in God's greatest adventure and to play a pivotal role in his plan. Yet as far as the world sees, Mary doesn't have so much as a track record. But then perhaps that's the point. Mary may not have been ruling nations from childbirth and, and handing out judgment from a throne, but she has not been sat twiddling her thumbs, waiting for her moment to arrive. She was simply living her life every day, and it was the way she lived that life that attracted God to her in the first place. So actually, she actually did have a great track record. She had a great track record before God, and was already highly favoured long before he asked her to do anything specific. You see, it was her qualities, not her qualifications, that drew his attention. Her faith so far showed her potential faith to come. And of course, it is equally true that you and I don't simply sit around waiting for God to shout our name, do we? There's actually such a lot to do every day. In fact, there's so much to do that the chance to do something for God would be a fine thing, I think. Yet what we overlook is that the angel is asking of Mary is something that rather than trying to cope with everything on her own and figure it out all for herself and trying to survive her own adventure through this world, Gabriel invites her to see her life as something bigger, a part of God's greater adventure. What I want you to hear is that it's because Mary had enough experience of God in her everyday life that she was able to see God's calling and direction for herself and choose it for herself. And if we want to play a part in God's greater adventure, God's great adventure, God's greatest adventure, however we want to call it, then we also need to have those experiences of him in our everyday lives. Gabriel reveals several things to Mary, clues you might say, but interestingly she isn't overburdened with more than she needs to know in order for her to say yes and take the next step. God gave her affirmation. He said you are already highly favoured. The Lord is with you and the angel says God sees you, he knows you and he loves you. God showed her also what she was being called to. He will be with child. He will be called the son of the most high God. A clear and easy call to respond to. Well, when I say it's easy, you know what I mean. God gave her her sign. He says, your cousin, empty elderly Elizabeth, is already having a child. Elizabeth is already on my team, so you're not alone. Your adventure is already part of a greater adventure. And these clues were enough. Based on who she already knew God to be, who she had seen and heard, Mary knew what God was asking was important. God's team and his adventure included her and by saying yes, that together they would be able to bless the wider world. We know that God didn't lay every little thing out before Mary and say it'd be idyllic and easy. He gave her enough to get started so that over time her faith would grow accordingly to match and exceed each increasing step along the way. And I believe that God has given you enough to get started. And I challenge you over the next 12 days of Christmas season to ask yourself, several questions each day 
of the 12 and reflect on your answers. What can you do today that would make God say, you are highly favoured? Where can you say yes to God today? And how can you allow God to direct your life today? If, like Mary, you can answer these three questions over the next 12 days, friends, I am convinced that our faith will grow and will exceed any challenge that we face. Thanks be to God for his word to us. Amen. Friends, we have a prayer of response with a prompt and a response, and the words will be on the screen. When you hear me say, as the heavens are higher than the earth, please respond, so our ways are not your ways, nor our thoughts your thoughts. Let's pray. Eternal God, you came to our world not in a blaze of publicity, surrounded by pomp and show, nor to the frenzied acclaim of, of crowds gathered to meet your coming. But quietly, unassumingly, almost unnoticed, in the quiet of the night in the little town of Bethlehem, born in a manger to the Virgin Mary, your coming first witnessed by shepherds out working in the fields. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so our ways are not your ways, nor our thoughts your thoughts. Time and again, however, you have chosen the small, the humble, the insignificant, and worked your purposes out through them. You have shown your strength in what the world counts as weakness. You have made the first last, and the least the greatest. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so our ways are not your ways, nor our thoughts your thoughts. So teach us what it means today, that you can use us beyond our imagining, that you can take what seems unimportant and turn it into something wonderful, that you can work among us in such ways that exceed our wildest expectations. Teach us to see life not merely from our own perspective, but from yours. And so, may your strength be made perfect in our weakness. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so our ways are not your ways, nor our thoughts your thoughts. Thanks be to God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our prayers of intercession are using the word Advent as an acronym. So each stanza is taken by one letter and there is a prompt and response in which case they are the same. When you hear the line, may the coming of Christ fill them with hope, please respond likewise. May the coming of Christ fill them with hope. Let's pray together. We pray for those who are angry and for those who are alone, for those who have been abused by others and for those who ache to be accepted. May the coming of Christ fill them with hope. May the coming of Christ fill them with hope. We pray for those who feel defeated by all that they face each day, for those who are dying or sick, and for those who are filled with despair. May the coming of Christ fill them with hope. May the coming of Christ fill them with hope. We pray for those with a vision for peace, and for those who are the voice of the poor, for those who teach us to value each other, and for those who work with the vulnerable, the homeless and the lost. May the coming of Christ fill them with hope. May the coming of Christ fill them with hope. 
we pray for planet Earth and for those who encourage us to care for it, for those seeking to escape the fighting in their homelands, their communities, their families, and for those working to provide essential food and clothing for all the world's immigrants and refugees, the homeless, the destitute and the starving. May the coming of Christ fill them with hope. May the coming of Christ fill them with hope. We pray for our neighbours, those who live next door, across the road or across the world, for those who are seeking to follow the narrow way, for those who name the name of Jesus and bring good news of him to others. May the coming of Christ fill them with hope. May the coming of Christ fill them with hope. We pray for those whose lives have been changed by the work of terrorists, for those whose faith has been tested by the things that have happened to them, for those who teach us about Jesus, and for those who should be the target of our love. May the coming of Christ fill them with hope. May the coming of Christ fill them with hope. We ask these and all our prayers in the name of Christ, the one who brings us our hope. Amen. closing prayer. May it come to pass that the goodness of God, the grace of Jesus who is born of Mary, and the presence of the Spirit find a place in our hearts. 
May Christ be our goodness, our grace and our hope. May Christ be our yes to God once more. Amen. Friends, you're welcome, if you're with others, to turn to them and share what we call the grace of God. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.